Okay, let's have a little look at binding because it was a question that came up yesterday. And basically I'm going to make the bottom of a, a fictitious bag. So this is the um, side part of my bag and this will be my gusset. So this will be the bit that goes around the outside. Um, that could be a bag, could be a backpack, could be whatever, but it's just to give you an idea of how um, binding works. Now what I'm doing is I've got my exterior fabric, which is this hideous um, roses, and my lining fabric, which was equally as hideous roses. Um, and in between the two, I have a layer, and I'm using headliner for this because it is only a tutorial and I don't want to use my style wheel. Style wheel is a little thicker, so it's actually the, the binding that I've got is better for style wheel because it's it's the right size for style wheel, not really the right size for headliner. So, but it'll give you an idea. Um, so what I've done is I've made a sandwich with the foam in the middle and the exterior fabric on one side, right sides out, and the lining fabric on the other side, right sides out. And I've so basted around the outside side edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to do exactly the same with my um, gusset. So I've stuck it together. So what we've got is this sandwich. Both the exterior and lining fabrics are lined. And I'm just going to go, I've literally clipped it together, making sure that all of the edges are matched up. And I'm just going to make a sandwich that I'm buying, um, that I'm uh, basting together. Some people choose not to do the basting. I prefer to do the basting so that I know that everything stays where I want it to. Um, and it gives a really nice finish. Now, often when I'm um, using binding inside of a bag, I will actually give that fabric a little tug so that it's the lining fabric in particular feels a little bit like it's pulled slightly too tight. But just make sure that your lining fabric will stay sitting nice and taut inside of your bag. Um, the idea of binding not only gives a bit of stability to the bag, it gives structure in the, in the seams, but it also means that you should get a nice snug fitting lining. But you sometimes find that that doesn't happen unless you give your lining just a little bit of a tug so that it's kind of fractionally smaller, if you like. Um, and I haven't even been known to cut it an eighth of an inch smaller, just so that it's it's literally pulled as tight as it can be. Now, when you do your basting stitches, sometimes where you compress the foam, you'll end up with a little bit of foam, as I have here, that just pushes out of the sides. Cut that off because you want to be going, you want to be binding to the edges of your fabric rather than to this little bit of extra foam that you've suddenly sort of pushed out where you've compressed your foam. It's actually more noticeable when you use Styleville because it's a thicker foam. So there we are. I have my, um, this is my gusset and this is my exterior. So you would normally be told to match up a centre mark on your um, gusset. I'm going to match up a fictitious centre mark and I'm going to clip it in place. Normally, and I haven't cut this to any size, you'll be told to cut the, to clip the top of your gusset. Let's just do that. To the top of your bag. Since I haven't measured this, this is all a bit hit and miss. Um, and you're clipping it so that the, you've got the exterior right sides together. And then you would go around the curve, go around the edge, matching the edges up and easing that curve into place. Because any kind of bag where you have to ease a curve in, and this is regardless of whether you're uh, making one with binding or, or in a more traditional um, technique, you getting round curves is quite a challenge for some people. You have to take it slowly and just kind of ease those curves in. I do a lot of this when I'm easing curves in, just kind of wiggling it a bit to, to get the curves matched up perfectly. If you start from your centre mark, you can usually just work out. What you don't want is, is that. You don't want puckers on the inside. So I think you can see there, there's, there's sort of puckers. Can you see? I'm not sure. Yes, you can. Uh, puckers, you don't want that. What you need is for that curve 
to sit smoothly around or the gusset to sit smoothly around the curve on the side of your bag or the bottom of your bag or wherever it is on your bag. So since I'm not actually using a pattern, I'm just literally making up a, a bit to, as a sample pack, as a sample for you. So there we are, that's my gusset clipped in place around the exterior of my bag. Now I'm going to take my two pieces together and I'm going to stitch them together. So I'm just gonna literally, I'm gonna take my stitch down. Bear in mind you're going through what is effectively four layers of fabric, four layers of interfacing, plus two layers of your foam. This is, you may well need a slightly bigger needle than you would normally use because you're going through quite a lot of layers. And you're gonna carefully stitch around the outside of those pieces. will tell you what your seam allowance needs to be. Um, if you're not using a pattern, then you, obviously you're, you're the person in charge of what the seam allowance will be. So I'm not gonna tell you what seam allowance to use because it will, if you're using a pattern with um, a binding inside, then that pattern should tell you what uh, seam allowance to use. afraid to push fabrics out of the way. So there we are, that's that all stitched together. Now if I turn my bag right sides out, you can see we have a lovely curved bottom. And normally you'd be told to clip into that, um, that seam allowance um, and maybe trim your seam allowance down, trim out the foam and what have you. But in this instance, we, we're not going to because we're going to bind it. So I'm gonna just turn it back in the other way and I'm gonna show you two different methods. Now, the first is with bias binding. Now, this is the only bit of bias binding I could find. I don't have bias binding because I generally don't make have ready-made bias binding if I'm going to have bi make binding if I'm going to use binding start again if I'm going to use bias binding I will make it myself and have it to match my lining so that you won't see it once it's finished I'm going to use this because this is what I found in my drawer um, and then I have this which is what's commonly referred to as quilt binding and this I have made it was made for a different project um, and the thing with with um, binding is that all binding um, unless you're just binding on a straight edge, is cut on the bias. So the grain of the fabric is going at 45 degrees to the fabric. If you hold your bias binding up, and this is cheap and cheerful bias binding, you can actually see that the grain of the fabric is at 45 degrees, not up and down as you would expect it to be. The same applies to this binding. It's cut at an angle. And the reason it's cut at an angle is because what you want is for the fabric to be able to stretch so that it will easily go round corners and curves without, um, this will do the same, without uh, any kind of puckering. So we'll start with, and this is um, some binding that I made up, so I, it was something that was in my drawer. It's probably not the right size for this because this is quite, um, quite uh, thin. Now, I still like to clip into my curves, oops, just to let those curves sit better, making sure that you don't um, cut into your stitching. Some people don't and your pattern will tell you what to do. So I've 
we'll assume that I've done that. Now, binding. When you get to your binding stage, it will tell you which side of your fabric that you need to bind. Uh, so whether you're binding on the gusset or starting on the gusset or whether you're starting on the um, side panels. Now, I've seen some patterns where they literally fold that binding over that side, clip it in place, and you have to kind of make sure that you've got an equal amount on both sides clip it in place and then stitch with the sewing machine going through both um, both sides basically the top and the bottom now the problem with that is that unless you've been really accurate with how with, with making sure that your binding is half and half you'll be happily stitching along here and then you'll go to the other side and realize that you actually haven't stitched the other side on um, and that just gets untidy my other issue with that let me just, if I just do a few stitches and you'll see. I'll, if I just, if I do this with a big basting stitch, just to give you an idea, because I'm going to take it out afterwards. Um, so you need to stitch as close to the edge as you can. Let's just turn my stitch up. It's just. So even if you're stitching an eighth of an inch away from your, your binding, Obviously, you wouldn't use a stitch length that long. Um, my problem with this is, no, there you go, classic example, it's not actually caught on the bag, is that inside of your bag, you will have just that little bit of a lip. And that lip will catch every bit of fluff and detritus that's in the bottom of your bag forever and ever, amen. And that, I think, is ugly it just makes your bag grubby inside um, and you'd have the same on the opposite side if you've managed to catch both sides in one uh, line of stitching so let me just take that off because i don't want that on there that's why i don't like fully machined um binding it's it's actually quite difficult to do um and i don't think it gives a really nice finish um So what I propose to do when I use bias binding is on the, let's turn the, oh, let's get to the other end because I've just put holes all in that. That's not even a very good bit of binding. It's got bits and pieces out of it. Okay, let's turn it over and open one side and that side lay right along the very, very edge of your fabrics now if you prefer and i have done that sometimes when i have used ready-made um, press out one side just literally press that fold out i don't generally because i don't think i need to um, this is particularly a not a horrible bias it's very stiff it's not 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 nice um, in keeping that that fold open going all the way Let's use some smaller clips because those are quite big around the curve i haven't done a, a corner on this bag so i can't show you how to get around a corner with this video because i haven't actually done that going all the way around the curve and you would carry on all the way around um, and mitre your end, but I can't show you that either because I haven't got a whole bag to do. <laughs> um, but I do have a plan for a little bag, a little project um, for a sew along after Christmas. So, um, and there will be some binding in that. So there we go. You can see that I've literally matched up the side of the binding. I'm just going to trim off that end because I don't need that. I'm going to do the other side with the quilt binding and show you the difference. Um, matched up the side of the binding with the edge of my bag and now I'm going to stitch that in place now again I'm not going to give you a seam allowance to use because it will depend on what pattern you're doing and the pattern should tell you a what size binding to use so what width of binding and your seam allowance um, and because this is really thin and I haven't measured anything um, I'm not even sure that I'm going to be using an appropriate seam allowance for this but I'm going to just sew it because I want to show you how to put it on 
So back stitch just at the beginning and stitch all the way around again. Attaching your binding to your bag. Take it slowly, use loads of clips, make sure your gusset's pulled out of the way so you don't get big old bulky bits. And you can do this, it, it, obviously it will depend on your um, pattern, we'll tell you whether you're going to supposed to be doing this from the gusset side or from the um, side panel side. I'm videoing Isabel. Um, so there we have, sorry about that. There we have our binding attached and the edge of our binding is up against the very edge of our bag. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our binding, we've got bits of thread everywhere, and we're going to ease it over the exposed seam allowance. Take it gently. Once you've eased it over, clip it in place. go around those curves it should ease around those curves quite easily because it's bias cut so it's cut to, to, to actually be able to stretch and go around curves quite easily you shouldn't get any puckers you should have a nice smooth edge now at this point some people like to use their machine to stitch around that side however that will often give you a line of stitching on this side that is actually superfluous and I think looks really ugly. So for me, and for most people that have any background in quilting, the best way to finish your binding is by hand. Now, you can either use a small slip stitch or you can use a ladder stitch, which is sometimes referred to as an invisible stitch. Um, and just literally, Go round, you can leave the clips in and use as many clips as you want, as you think is, and, and I would use a self-coloured thread as well. I've literally just picked up a needle with um, a thread in it and make tiny little stitches. And these are less than quarter of an inch part that goes through the lining fabric and just literally through the edge of the binding. So if you use a thread that actually matches your binding, you won't see any of this. It takes a little time. And this is um, a traditional quilting technique, really. I mean, it's what people do on the edge of quilts. And most quilters are really familiar with this sort of way of doing um, binding but they would mostly use their own binding as opposed to ready-made. Now it takes a little while to get round and I've just come unthreaded. And just gently you don't need to go through all the foam and what have you. So you're not actually stitching through, hand stitching through. If you were making a bag with a faux leather exterior, you wouldn't be stitching through any of that. You'd only be stitching through the lining fabric um, and through, uh, sometimes you catch a little bit of the foam. Now, the only time I think where there could be an issue is if you were, and I've never done this, so I can't really tell you, is if you were using the heavy duty waterproof canvas inside of your bag and you wanted to make binding from that, um, I think then you would probably need to stitch it with your machine. However, I think with waterproof canvas, you can leave a raw edge. So you literally are just folding over. 
um, because it's not uh, doesn't fray. It still doesn't leave a really tidy finish inside of a bag though, in my opinion. And that is just my opinion. So I'm not gonna go all the way around because you don't really need to sit and watch me hand stitching because that's just boring. Um, but you kind of get the idea. What you end up with is a really nice bound seam inside of your bag. Now, if I just, I'm just going to finish that bit of stitching off there. Just going to just do a couple of stitches just to stop my threads coming adrift. And well, I'm going to turn the bag back in the right way. And you can see there, what you end up with is a really nice, tidy, bound um, inside. Obviously, that's still got clips on there. Um, if your binding is done like that, you can roll the seam on the outside. Now, you will have a thicker seam because you've not cut away any seam allowance inside. Um, and you will have a slightly more rolled look on the outside. So if, if, if a, a slightly puffier outside doesn't appeal to you, then a bound seam is not the way forwards. But you should be able to flatten it out quite nicely. But you can see there, you can see a little bit of the base of my bag um, because that bound seam is, is quite bulky inside. So that's using bias binding. Now let's have a little look, and I'm gonna do this from the other side, at using quilt binding. Now quilt binding is different in so much as bias binding is um, has is one flat surface and both sides are folded in. Um, we're all familiar with what bias binding is. I say this is cheap bias binding. Most a lot of bias bindings go uh, have a much bigger fold on either side. I believe that was eBay. No, never again. Quilt binding, which I've made. This has been made sometime I made it for some a completely different project um, you cut the full width of your fabric on the bias um, and you can join all your pieces together and I'll show you how to do that in another video at another time and then you just fold it in half with the wrong sides together and give it a jolly good press so it's slightly different in 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 the way it's actually made up than bias binding now we take our quilt binding and again we would lay the very edge of it the open edges against the edge of our bag. This binding may well be, well, I know it is, it's gonna to be too big for this um, this bag. It's too wide, but this is what I happen to have, so this is what I'm using. And again, you're gonna ease it around those corners, around that curve, the same as you did before. Making sure that you kind of move your gusset out of the way. making sure that the raw edge, the open edge of your binding stays absolutely on the edge of your bag. I'm just gonna trim off that last little bit because obviously we don't need all of that. And again, we're gonna stitch around using the seam allowance that's given in, um, in the pattern. Now, this is only a small piece, so it's not, it's, it's quite easy to keep hold of. If you are making a bigger bag, if you're making a whole bag, there are a couple of tips that work really well. And I have to say, I'd like to say these were things that I kind of came up with. I'd be lying. Um, By Annie is an American designer. She's a quilter and a bag maker, a bag pattern writer. And a lot of, because she came from a quilting background, a lot of her patterns have bound seams, either inside or outside. And you'd use the same technique, whether you were binding on the inside or the outside. Um, and the one thing that I've learned from By Annie patterns, and I've only done a few, is that sometimes people say, oh, I can't keep hold of my binding when it goes around corners or when it goes around curves. And all is a great thing to use. So let's just, it just gives you like an extra finger, a way of holding that fabric. Let's just go do a couple of back stitches. To hold your binding in place and make sure that it stays absolutely on the edge of your, your bag. I think the other piece of advice I've got is don't rush it. Just do not rush what you're doing because rushing it 
will give you a really bad finish. Um, if you're going to use a contrast binding, then you want it to look really good. If, if, even if you're not using a contrast binding, um, you want it to look good. So, use you know, using an awl just gives you an extra finger to make sure that everything's held in place and that you haven't got your fingers where the needle needs to be. So our binding is all in place and we're going to do exactly the same thing again. We're going to take that binding and we are, oh, I've got a thread there that's good to know where that's come from. Take that binding and ease it over the seam allowance. Again, clip in place. And you will need lots of clips if you're going to do binding because it's the only way to keep it all nice and tidy. Let's get rid of these threads that I've got going on there. Ease it over this curve. And you can pull the binding and you need to sort of, what I tend to do is, is pull the binding with my fingers and push the seam allowance right in. And again, if you've done your binding properly and you've done it at a 45 degree angle, it should go round your curve without any puckering. This binding's probably a bit snug on here, but And then again, you can either stitch around that side. Let's just, let's just do a few bits of stitching. And again, you would need to stitch as about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of your binding. And again, using that all, to make sure that your binding stays nice and snug. You need it to be really nice and snug against the edges of the, the foam um, and whatever stabilizers you've got in. So you can just use your awl to hold the binding in place as you stitch, just to give it a bit of, I'm just gonna go back a couple of stitches there, just to show you. So where have all these threads come from? There you can see I've finished that with a, with the sewing machine. Um, it does have that little lip, even though I've stitched that at probably, that's probably only a sixteenth of an inch away. You still have that little tiny lip, which I just don't like. It just gathers dust and stuff. Um, on this side, the line of stitching is just, again, it's just on the edge of my um, binding, but if you're millimeter out it'll be on the inside inside on the lining which although it's inside doesn't really matter but it, it bothers me so again for my money and for most people who are quilters the best way to finish this binding is And again, this is light coloured binding, so I'm literally using a thread that doesn't match. Is to finish it by hand. I just think that the finished article is so much nicer if you finish by hand. I know hand stitching isn't for everybody, and if you are a person who for whatever reason, whether you've got arthritic hands or you just can't see or you just don't want to do it, you can do it by machine, but it doesn't look as nice when you've finished. So I'm not going to get, carry on round, but you, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, both techniques, both binding methods 
give a very similar finish on the outside of the bag. However, for me, this quilt binding, um, finished by hand, is just nicer. Let me just take those off. It's a more traditional um, method of doing binding. Your finished effect, let's take these off, on the outside is pretty much the same, whichever technique, oh, whichever technique you use. So you'll have a thicker, chunkier seam on your bag. However, that extra that extra bulk in there gives a bag great structure. So if you um, if you're making something that's quite big, that will that will help with the structure. And inside, all you will see is just um, if you do it in self, the same colored fabric as you're using for your lining, then you shouldn't see anything. But you will have a sort of a, a roll inside where that seam allowance is. And that would be on both sides of your bag. So that's basically two different methods of using um, binding. And so you've got bias binding or quilt binding. Both work equally as well. I prefer quilt binding because I can match my fabrics. Um, the essential things to have, I think, is an awl. Um, and say so that's a, a Biani technique, nothing to do with me. I, I like to say I coined it, but I didn't. Um, so an awl and lots and lots of clips. Don't be afraid to use loads and loads of clips. And that's um, binding. There are lots of bag patterns out there at the moment with binding and say by any patterns all have binding. Um, so either inside or outside. And you can bind seams on the outside. Um, let me just grab something and show you. Oh, I'm just going to have to take my press out. So this is a, a press case for my... Um, rivet press and this has binding on all of the external seams it's constructed in a very similar way it also has binding around um, the doors of it and you can see there that one's got square nice square corners on it so that's got a mitered corner I think you can see that am I in shot yes I am it's got a nice mitered corner but I'll show you mitered corners at some point in the future and this is entirely finished by hand so all of the stitching um, is finished by hand but you've got it, it gives it real structure so it's a bag that stands up because it's a bag that's designed to hold um, my rivet press so you can see Binding has its uses. It's not for everybody. Um, and it's not difficult to do. And there are several methods and everybody has their own preferred method. The thing that I do will say that is if you want to have a really nice flat seam um, at the bottom, sort of between the, shall we say, the side of your bag and the base of your bag. So you don't want the base of your bag to show from the front. Binding isn't going to work for you. Um, because you will not ever get that really nice flat seam because you're always going to have that bulk inside where the binding is. So it's a it's a technique that's useful in bag making. It has its place in bag making. A lot of bag makers don't like it, um, but it has, in some bags, it works really well. Um, and if you've got a bag that's really difficult to fit a lining or an unusual shape, um, then this works. And if you want a lining that fits perfectly, and is nice and snug, then this will work, but it does make extra work. So I hope that's been useful.